Jenny's going to send it to Oh, because she's got it on. She's got it on. God 
welcomes all of it, and we do too. So we are glad you are here. We are glad that we get to spend this time together. So our service is a little different. The one slide says there's a sermon today. There is not. It is a poetic reading, and Reverend Betty is helping me with the service today, and we will be reading based on the scripture that Diane will read. It's unique. We will sing, we will pray, and we will listen today. So let us be called to worship. I have good news. Christ is born. Joy is alive. God is here. Thanks be to God. Let us worship together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you meet us wherever we are. You meet us in the joy of today, and you meet us in the sadness of other days. Be with us now in our worship. Be with those that are no longer with us. Be with those that are healing and recovering. Be with those that are on our hearts. Amen. Please stand and greet one another.
even more joyful when we are honest about who we are. We humans tend to be messy, scattered, and full of doubt at times. Knowing that Jesus was born in a manger for us, and that Jesus loves us and forgives us is even better news. So let us confess together to God, knowing that the honest truth of our lives only makes this good news better. Let us pray. Holy God, too often we feel as if change is hopeless, the problems of this world feel too big, the path forward is unclear, and we are not confident that we can truly make a difference. We give up hope. Forgive us for extinguishing hope. Holy God, too often we believe that peace is a thing of fairy tales. Our spirits are anxious. Our bodies are weary. Our world is fractured. Instead of praying for peace, both in ourselves and in our society, we assume that peace is no longer on the table. We give up. Forgive us for extinguishing peace. Holy God, too often we paint joy as naive, a luxury reserved for children and pets. We forget that you ate with friends, that you went to weddings, that you laughed and rested in high mountains. We forget that you knew joy, and that you want joy for us in this fractured world. Forgive us for turning away from your light. Forgive us for extinguishing joy. Holy God, too often we treat love like a vending machine. We put some coins in and assume that we'll get something back. However, in our wiser moments, we know that love is not meant for keeping score. Love is meant to overflow, to spill out to our neighbors, to transform our world. Forgive us for holding love so tightly. Forgive us for extinguishing love. Family of faith, sin separates us from things like hope, peace, and joy. Sin wiggles its way between us and love, both love of neighbor and love of self. Fortunately for us, God had something else in mind. God sent God's only son to this world so that we could see another way. So friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. No matter how many times we turn our back on hope or extinguish peace or snuff out joy, no matter how many times we let love burn out, God continues to light our way. We are forgiven. We are seen. We are loved. The good news of this day, the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of this day exists for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now would you stand please and join in singing the hymn, Blow Arrows and Blue.
Good morning and Merry Christmas. Would you bow your heads for the prayer of illumination? God of manger straw and swaddled cloth, God of silent nights and joyfully chaotic mornings, we long to know you. The hustle and bustle of this time of year can be more than distracting. So, for a moment, we pray. Still our busy hearts, quiet our minds. Help us to sink deeply into this day. Help us to pause here, to linger here, as we hear your good news spoken over us. God, we long to know you, so speak to us now. With grateful hearts we pray, with grateful hearts we listen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Please join in the response of him, God rest you merry gentlemen. Him. 
but to all, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. So in lieu of a sermon today, we're going to do a poetic reading that was written by Reverend Sarah Speed. She is the one that I've sent weekly Advent devotionals. She's a writer with a sanctified art. So let us listen for God speaking to us through the ancient poetry of John 1 that Diane just read. In the beginning was the word. Way back, a long, long time ago, before the stars, before the day, before the rivers were carved out of day. In the beginning, way back in that beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, Jesus, was in the beginning with God. In other words, we cannot say that love was born in a stable that day, for love was born when the horizon was drawn. It was born in the dark long before dawn. Love was born with the very first sea. And when God breathed life into you and me, long before magi or shepherds or dreams, long before sheep or angels that sing, love was here, building a way then and now and on Christmas Day. For all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And so Jesus shined, like a light in the dark or a star in the sky. Jesus walked into this world and opened our eyes, shining a light on social divides, and loving the scars we try to hide. He lit up this world like it's never seen, the light of all people, Emmanuel, King. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Hatred did not overcome it. Fear did not overcome it. Greed did not overcome it. A light shines in the darkness. Envy did not overcome it. Doubt did not overcome it. Scarcity did not overcome it. A light shines in the darkness. Death did not overcome it. Sickness did not overcome it. Grief did not overcome it. For he was in the beginning with God. Way back. A long, long time ago, before the stars, before the day, before the rivers were carved out of clay. And what has come into being in him was life. So we cannot begin with magis and sleep as sheep, for this story begins at the brink. Of creation and light. Of you and me. Of beloved and love of being set free. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and that light shines in the darkness. It always has, and it always will. That is where our story begins, with love for creation, from beginning to end. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. Like Mary, we believe in cherishing good news. Like the angels, we believe in singing God's praise. Like the shepherds, we believe that God's presence in our life is something worth talking about. Like generations before, we believe that God is with us. Like the generations to come, we believe that God is with us. God is here. God is love. We believe. Thanks be to God. Here are our call to offering. From generations and generations, it has been a Christian tradition to give gifts on Christmas. Children make homemade cards. Parents and friends give presents wrapped in brightly colored paper and bows. We do this in remembrance of the Magi who gave gifts when Jesus arrived. But we also do this because we love one another. And when you love someone, it feels good to give. So just as we give gifts to one another on Christmas morning, let us turn and do the same love towards God. Let us be generous with our time, our talents, and our treasures. It feels good to give when we love someone.
before you on this Christmas morning. Filled with joy for spending time with family. Filled with joy for worshiping together last night and this morning. We are grateful for our time and opportunity to be together to worship you, to love one another, to greet one another with joy and thanksgiving for being your church family, your beloved children. And we think of those who cannot worship because of war and persecution, for fear of leaving their homes, those that cannot gather together. And may we look for those who we are missing in our own pews, who we are missing to worship with in our own lives, and may we be the ones to reach out to them, to say, come on, be with us, worship with us. We miss you, and we reach out in love, and we reach out desire to be together. Dear Lord, we pray for Luke's dad, who lost a long time beloved friend, Steve, who passed away this week. We lift up his family and his friends. We lift all those who have loved lost ones in this season. Be with them in their grieving with them in their tender memories of loved ones. Hold them up close. And we lift up Rich and Shirley and their doctors and their nurses and all of their caretakers who are working with them to heal them. Be with them in their pain. Give them encouragement and give them strength them what they need to heal so they can come back to us in worship and be present with us. I know that that is what they want so badly too. And we lift up with joy presence, presence we give to one another, the beautiful book of pictures of a children's play. We know that we give gifts because we love one another. And we thank you for that opportunity to love and to grow and to serve, to give of our time and our treasures and our talents. And we pray with thanksgiving for all those that serve you and serve you without ceasing. So holy God of candlelight and open doors, God of tables and feasts, God of holly and of ivy, we give you our prayers. Like pennies shaken loose from our pockets, we turn over every corner of our hearts to give you our truth, to give you our truth through prayers of gratitude, to give you our truth through prayers of fear, give you our truth through prayers of grief, to give you our truth through prayers of joy. Collect them all and hold us close on this Christmas morning for today. Especially today we long to feel you near. With gratitude and joyful hearts we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, our Father. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Lord. Please stand for our closing hymn, Go Tell It On.
our blessing, we're going to do something a little different. I need you all to kind of circle around our sanctuary. Our bits. We don't need them. On germs. So see each other, look at each other as you hear these words. Friends, for generations, God has been drawing near to us over and over, year after year. Christmas has filled people with hope and with joy. So may we lean into that joy with the physical reminder of our connection, passed from person to person. Now receive this benediction. From generation to generation, God keeps drawing near. From generation to generation, a light is shown in the darkness. From generation to generation, God's love has moved through the world like our connection has moved through this room. So may we celebrate that. May we rest in the joy of this day. And may we allow it to change us. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. God is with you every step of the way. Amen. Amen.